Welcome to this video in this series on building a lateral backend and connecting it to Vue.js or Angular 2 frontends or in general using lateral with Vue.js and Angular 2. In this video we're going to build the lateral backend. So write some PHP, some lateral code. Now how does the backend look like? What does backend mean? What do we need to be able to connect our Angular 2 or Vue.js single page application to it? As mentioned in the first video of this series, we need some API endpoints and you could kind of translate that with some routes. So let's go to the routes folder. And here in a normal Laravel application, we always went to the web.php file and started setting up our routes there so that we then could go there in the browser and simply enter localhost or whatever your domain is slash your route, whatever you enter here. Now that is not how we do it or how we work when building just an API. An API is not there for a normal user to visit. It's not something you want to make available by just visiting localhost slash something. Or you can make it available to be visited like this, but you don't want to return views there. You don't want to return HTML. Instead, typically, you transfer JSON documents. So you get JSON data and you return JSON data. Laravel has a specific group for that, a group of routes, and that is in the api.php file. The difference between the two files are the middlewares which get applied to those routes. We can have a look at those middlewares in the app folder and there at http and then kernel.php file. Here all the middlewares are set up and here you can see those middleware groups, web and API. And as you can see, the web middleware group has a lot of middlewares which get applied to all the routes in the web.php folder. And the very important middlewares here are responsible for encrypting cookies, checking the CSRF token, storing the session. So all those typical tasks we need to do when we create a normal, well, Laravel application where we render some views where the user will do some things and send some requests back to us. Now for the API, we only have two default middlewares for throttling and substituting the bindings. And this is the difference. Here we're not storing or managing any session. We're not encrypting cookies. We're not setting any CSRF token because we won't use sessions. Our backend, and this is important, our backend does not care about our frontend and the other way around. We're not storing a user session because we're not using our backend like this because we're not sending requests like in a normal Laravel application. Our frontend, the Angular 2 application, for example, will from time to time send a request, but this does not have to be connected to the user who's on the page. The backend doesn't care. You could have a mobile app sending requests or a web app and your backend just does not care. Your backend simply provides some services, for example, an API endpoint where you can send some data which then gets stored in the database and it just doesn't care who wants it to store that. It doesn't need to manage a session and therefore we don't need that middleware. Now when it comes to authentication, that is something I'll cover in separate videos. But even there, we won't need sessions. So this is the difference. We will have much less API, um, or excuse me, middlewares uh, in general being added to our routes and that is why we take the api.php file. Now there we already got a route but we can get rid of this and instead create a new one. Now we will need four routes for the example application. We want to have a route which allows us to create a new quote. So a post route and we need to specify our path, so our URL basically. So let's name it slash quote for example. This means whenever we send a post request at, at what? Well, at our domain where the app runs, so that doesn't change from a normal Laravel application. So mine here has is mapped to Laravel ng2 view.dev. And then not slash quote, but slash API quote. That's just something Laravel adds in between two routes specified in the api.php file. It adds this API prefix. So every post request getting sent to this route will trigger, well, this route we set up here. So in this route here, I use the normal route configuration here with an array and say uses 
quote controller, a controller we still have to create, at post quote, for example. Now, we also need three other routes. We need a get route to get all quotes, so maybe from slash quotes. And then here also an array where we use our quote controller at get quotes. And then we also will need a route to update our content, our quote. Here I will accept a put request. Now a put request is something you maybe haven't seen before or at least not that often. Because in normal web applications ran by Laravel, where Laravel also renders the views, we only have post and get requests. Put, delete and so on requests are other valid HTTP methods which are not supported in normal web applications where we send a request by, for example, clicking the submit button. So by non Ajax requests. Since we will only use Ajax requests though, we can also use put, delete and all those other methods, those HTTP methods, which better describe the purpose of the request. So put basically means simply replace the old resource with the new content. You could also use patch if you only want to update a part of your old resource. Now here, it won't matter that much, but you can, can use either, either of the two. I will use put here. Now this shall also target quotes since we will simply edit a single quote, but I will also pass a parameter here, the ID of the quote we want to edit. So a dynamic parameter here in the path. And then again, just the configuration where we use the quote controller to put a quote, so to edit it. And finally, to delete it, we have the delete HTTP method also, also targeting a quote with the ID passed as a dynamic parameter. And then once we configure that, I will also target the, the quote controller here, of course, quote controller at delete quote. So these are our routes set up. The next step is to create the quote controller and actually hook those routes up. So I will do this in the controllers folder here in the app HTTP folder and simply create a new file quote controller.php. And here that's just normal PHP file, of course. The namespace is simply the same namespace as here. It's app HTTP controllers. So we can set this up here. And then I'll have a class quote controller, which will extend the controller from app HTTP controller. So from the same namespace. And in there I'll have four functions. The first one is responsible for creating a new quote. So post quote, that was the function name we set up here, post quote. And this will get the request. So we need to add that import the request object, which will hold our data. Now I will also create three other functions here, get quotes, which doesn't take any arguments, but which will in the end return all the quotes. Then I'll also have another function, which I'll name put quote. That's the same name I used in the, um, in the api.php file in the routes folder. Here I will get the ID of the quote I want to change and the request object. So both, we will have a request body and a parameter in the URL. And then finally, the last function I need is to delete quote function. Here I will just get the ID of the quote we need to delete. So all those functions are of course not doing anything, but we set them up. We're going to work on them in a second. Before we do so, we need a model, a quote model for accessing it, for storing it in the database and so on. So let's create this in the command line using the artition tool. I'm in a command line in the project folder in my Laravel project folder. And in this project folder, I will simply use PHP artition make model. So this command you probably know from my other projects and I'll name it quote. And with that, we can create the model. Now I also will create the fitting migration file. So make migration, of course, you could, com could have combined, combined that. Create quote table. 
So this will give me the quote model, this quote.php file. And here I don't really need to configure anything. And in the database folder, in the migrations folder, I already deleted the two other default migration files. Now I only got the new create quote table migration file. Now in there, I need to run schema create and I'll name it quotes. That will be the table name I will create. And quotes here, of course, takes a second argument. We'll pass a function blueprint table to then also configure the table, set up increments ID. So have this auto incrementing ID column to set up the timestamps and to be able to store some content, some content of the quote. So maybe in a text field, the content field. And then here I'll also create the schema drop function to drop the quotes table when we roll back the migrations. So with that, the model is set up, the database migrations are set up. We can now run it by running PHP artisan migrate. Make sure your database connection is set up correctly. So that created the database table. So that should be all stuff you already know from the other projects. With that, I can now continue working on my methods in there. So for creating a new quote, I obviously want to create a new quote using the quote model. And I will set the content of the quote to the content we pass here in the request, retrieving it with the input method, the content or the not quote, content will be the field name I will use. And of course, we need to make sure that our front end application, Angular 2 or Vue.js, will populate this content field here so that we actually send an HTTP request which has this content field. So with that, I'm setting the content of the quote. I can thereafter simply save that, save that quote. And now I want to return a response. I will use the response helper method to send a JSON response because as I explained, JSON is the data format we will receive and we will return. Now, the convenient thing with Laravel is we receive JSON, but as you see, we access the input of our request, the body of the request, just as we do in a normal Laravel application. So Laravel will unwrap that JSON content for us. We don't have to do that, which is great. All we have to do is tell it to also send back a JSON response. And I do so by using the response helper method here and then the JSON method. Now this method takes two arguments. The first one is an associative array, which will be then be transferred into JSON format by Laravel. And here we could simply, for example, return the newly created quote like this. So return the quote here. And I also want to send the status code 201 for everything was successful quote related. Uh, created. Now you could also do some error handling in case the database access goes wrong, but I'll leave it like this. Now with that, let's go on to the get quotes method here. So here I want to get some quotes using the quote model and I will use the all method, normal eloquent syntax to fetch all the quotes from the database. Now with the quotes fetched, I'll uh, create a new response helper variable here, which is an associative array. And in this array, I simply want to return my quotes like this, just to show an alternative to inlining this as we did in the post quote method. And then I will return response, JSON, the response object or variable I just created, and then 200. So this gives me back all quotes, not too difficult, I guess. Now in the put quote method, I first need to find the quote. So again, using eloquent quote, and then find the ID. And then I want to check if I did find it. So if quote is not set, it is, if it is empty, then I want to return a response, which is of course also of type JSON, where I simply set some message, let's say a message could be document not found, and then a 404 status code. But if I do find the quote, well, in this case, I want to set the quote content to the content I get in my request body, retrieved via the input method again. And then I can call quote update to update it or save to override it, maybe save since we put it here. So we really override the old record, keeping the ideas and so on though. 
And then I will return a response here. The response is of type JSON. And here I will simply also return the quote, let's say. And you can return anything there, any message you wanna retrieve on your front and whatever you need. And then also status code 200. Last but not least, here in the delete quote method, I'll also fetch the quote with the find method. So find it here and then simply call the delete method on it like this. Now with that, I can then also return a response of type JSON, where I also say, set some message, for example, quote deleted, or simply return an empty array if you don't wanna return any data, you don't have to. And then status code 200. So with that, all the controller actions are configured, do hold some code, do use my model, they are hooked up to my API routes. So that looks good. Now to quickly test it, I will use a tool named Postman. You can find it by simply Googling for Postman and Postman is a great tool for testing APIs. It allows you to send some requests there and get back the responses. Now I already installed it, so I quickly switch to it. And here in Postman, you basically can select the type of request you wanna send. So I wanna create a new quote, let's say, so I'll switch to post, then enter your URL. For me, it's Laravel ng2 view.dev slash API, as I explained, this will be a prefix automatically added by Laravel. And then quote, that was the route we set up here in the API.php file for creating a new uh, poster, excuse me, quote here. Now we also need to attach some content here in the body. I want to set a raw body to send some, well, raw data. This will be a JSON document, a JSON data format. So like a JavaScript object with opening and closing curly braces, and then all keys and values wrapped between double quotation marks. And here we need to set a content key and then a value of some content, for example. Now to make the server understand that we're sending JSON data, I'll set a content type header on this request, set it to application slash JSON to inform the backend, hey, you're getting some JSON data. And then I'll hit send. And here we see the newly created quote. It has the ID too, because I already created one comment or one quote to test it behind the scenes. So probably has ID one for you and it looks good. It looks like it works. So let's create a new request and a get request to see our newly created uh, post. Here I'll send this to Laravel ng2 view.dev slash API slash quotes to get all quotes. No need to set some header here because this will just get some data and then click send. And here indeed we get back an array of quotes which holds our one quote we created. Now let's change that quote. I'll switch the post method on the first request to a put method and leave the URL as it is. Well, almost I'll add the ID of the quote I want to add it. So two was the ID. So I'll add two at the end here. And then I also need to adjust the body of that request and maybe switch this to some content with many exclamation marks and hit send. And I get back the updated quote. As we can also see if I send the get quotes request again. Now you see we still get that array, but in the single quote we have in the database, the exclamation marks were added. Well, and finally to set or to send a delete request, I'll switch that to delete. No need to send some body data there. No need to set the header. Instead, just have the URL with the parameter with the ID of the quote at the end, hit send. Quote deleted, let's confirm by fetching all quotes, we get an empty array. So our API seems to work. In the next video, I wanna build the Angular 2 frontend and try to connect it with our newly created backend here.